you're probably wondering why the title of this video doesn't start out with uh, 2J Mustang. And I guess that's because I don't know what else to do with it yet. We have some things planned for it, but uh, we're moving on to something else. So if you guys have been wondering what this big palette has been in the, in the background of the shop for a little while, I kind of teased about it uh, in one of the videos. I never showed anybody basically what it is. You guys probably know by the title of this video that uh, it's actually to fix this car. So this is a 2014 BMW 328D wagon. So it's all wheel drive. It has a two liter four cylinder turbo diesel engine. And they basically make like 200, like 200 horsepower and almost 300 foot pounds of torque or something like that. But they, they get like 36 miles a gallon average uh, driving them around. So as you guys know, I have my 08 uh, Saab, my dad wagon. And uh, I just kind of wanted something a little bit newer, a little bit more comfortable, something that gets like better mileage other than 20. But uh, that's kind of where this thing came in. It was kind of an impulse thing. I was just kind of looking around and been kind of wanting one and was looking on Facebook Marketplace. And every single one of them was selling, you know, between like 23 and 26 or something like that for basically one similar to this uh, from dealers and stuff like that. I think they recently just kind of went down. Now you could find them for like 18-ish, something like that. But uh, I basically got this thing from the auction for 8,100 and some dollars after all the taxes and fees and, and stuff. And then it was about $800 to ship it out here. And then right here is uh, the side, the whole side of the car. So it being a wagon, a BMW wagon specifically, the rear door obviously is way different than sedans. The front, the front door is the same, but then the quarter panel and basically this lower rocker area is what I actually need. And you guys, before we get too far into today's video, I would like to talk about today's video sponsor, World of Warships. It is actually a war game where you can command some of, of history's most iconic war vessels, unlock new ships, and prepare to dominate the ocean. So if you guys haven't heard about it, I'm surprised you guys haven't because it's been around since 2015. They have over 300 fully realistic, de crazy detailed warships, and they've accumulated over 30 million online players from all around the world. Tons of war and explosions. Uh, one of my favorite parts about the game is you could actually go in and modify. You could change the, the color scheme, upgrade your ships, buy a new ship, and then basically take them right out on the ocean and, uh, and battle with other people. So if you guys like war and explosions and games like this, be sure to check out the link in the description. If you guys use the code BATTLESTATIONS2020 during registration, uh, you'll actually get a lot of, uh, of different goodies and stuff. Uh, which will be on the screen. Again, check out the link in the description. Huge shout out to War World of Warships for sponsoring this video. If you guys aren't super into it, just please, if you can, go download it. Unique code in the description. Uh, it helps me out, helps show them that I'm actually of value, and hopefully they'll, they'll maybe sponsor another video, which again allows me to do a bunch of crazy stuff like this out in the shop, uh, as well as traveling to events and, uh, and doing stuff like that. So uh, again, appreciate World of Warships, link in the description, and uh, let's get started. You guys can't see that, but it is damaged. Um, and I have the door hanging out for it, basically right here. So I think, I don't know, the car's from California. And I think it, it looks like a motorcycle ran into the side of it or something like that. It's a weird accident, but basically the, the I, I, I thought I was basically going to be able to get it, throw a door on it, pull out a little bit of the, the, the door skin ended up being a little bit worse than I thought. But um, yeah, so I've had this pallet here for a little while, but it, we basically got it right around the same time that we're starting all the 2J Mustang stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and actually move the Civic out of here, move this out of here, move this thing out of here and scoot this over so that, that way I kind of have this area right here to work on it. And then uh, we're gonna start dissecting it and see actually how much of this thing uh, I need to take apart. Uh, I basically got this whole side of the car in, in shipped for just a little bit more than an OEM panel would have been from BMW, BMW and it came with both the doors, uh, shipping cost, and the side curtain airbag and everything, uh, and that was like 2500 bucks. So, and the, the panel was like 16 without shipping, and there, was, there wasn't any in the United States. So, uh, quit rambling, we're going to move this thing, and uh, are you excited for 40 miles a gallon? It's not my 40 miles a gallon. So. I mean, <laughs> it might not even be my 40 miles a gallon, because... I don't have that long of a commute to the shop, and uh, I thought about just selling it to my mom, so she was interested in it. So I might get her done, we might get 40 miles a gallon, or we might sell it to my mom, but we're getting started.
So now it's over here. I just went ahead and pulled the side skirt off so I could start looking at it a little bit better and try to get a plan of attack on exactly how I'm gonna do this thing. Uh, I still don't know what happened to this. I think it was some sort of motorcycle or like a forklift ran into it or maybe a trailer backed into it. Cause it's just such a weird thing. There's basically like a puncture right there that goes right here. And then all this stuff is kind of pushed in. And then on the door, take a look at this. That was, uh, that's basically it. So not really a bunch of like scratches and scrapes. Kind of looks like something plastic or rubber headed almost. But uh, yeah, I think I might've went overkill by buying the whole side of the car, but uh, I was gonna buy the door from these guys anyhow, and the front and rear doors from them and the side curtain airbag. And uh, so it just made sense to just kind of get the whole thing. Like I said, this whole piece right here, basically this whole skin for the side was like $1,600 and uh, there wasn't even any in the United States. So we have everything if we need it, but looking at it, I, I'm kind of getting scared of this. Uh, I think it's gonna be a little bit more work than I thought if I do the whole skin, because I just pulled the, the rain guard off right here. And so right here on the top, these are the spot welds. So normally you drill out the spot welds and you could pull off the roof. And, uh, but underneath the spot welds for the roof, are the spot welds for this so this whole piece right there so in order to get that whole piece off that whole sheet off i would basically have to remove the front windshield and then pull off the roof of the car so basically pull off the whole roof of the car unskin this whole thing put it back on weld everything all back together put the roof back on it if i don't mess it up and uh i don't know that's just a whole lot of work and to me i feel like we could just kind of section this in so some of the videos that i've watched online of people actually doing this themselves or garages and shops and stuff like that is everybody avoids like when they do a quarter panel they avoid this like the plague is what it seems like they cut it in here and they cut it right here and then in the door jam and so i think that might be a little bit better and maybe I, not, I might not even go around and do this whole back section and do any of that stuff um, i was thinking i could probably get away with just kind of doing it like right in here and just have a little weld seam right there super simple blend that in do a little bit of body work and then i guess just uh, once i get this outer shell off go ahead and pull some of the inner skin so it all mates up together uh, i think i think the bottom of this pillar is pushed in just a little bit so what i would do is basically cut it right here cut it right there cut it right here and basically just splice in that whole section so i technically probably could i probably could have got it off of a sedan made it work and not had to spend as much money to get this whole side of the car but again this is kind of one of them things no matter what i'll have enough pieces to make it work so i'll probably just try kind of disassembling this car first to see how how we get so that way i know where to cut that one um i don't know the other option is initially so my initial plan with this whole thing was basically to get it by a front door rear door and pull out some of this stuff which i think i could honestly still do like it's not that bad uh, like if i had a frame rack or if i had like a v-tuned or somebody locally to me like that uh, this thing would have probably been done months ago but uh locally we just have like big body shops that don't let guys like me come in there and like say hey can you just pull out this piece of the the thing for me like kind of like how v tune does for goon squad just show up over there spend the night pull out some stuff and then take it back and do the rest themselves um we don't have anybody around here like that at least that i know of so um but yeah so uh i'm gonna start looking at it a little bit more probably need to pull off this front door and fender just kind of uh, maybe mount that other front door on there and then kind of go from there and, and see what we need to do
Alright guys, so Trevi's Customs is in the house with uh, with my custom frame puller. So uh, again, this is kind of kind of one of those examples of something where it uh, it'll give us a little bit of uh, of pull on it, uh, give us some bracing down there on the bottom, kind of right above the pinch welds. Uh, as you can see, I have it pinched right there just so it doesn't shoot up. And then we had ties standing on the back when I was actually pulling on this thing. So I was basically pulling right here, uh, just trying to get this post out just a little bit, uh, just because you could tell it's just pushed in. Uh, so we have a little bit of, uh, of kinkage right here still. And then we have some more right there that we kind of need to, to figure out where all the tension is. And then you can see right here, that's the inner structure right there. So uh, I would like to be able to leave this in here once we get this off. Uh, but we had an issue with the wheel key, basically the wheel key got all rounded off in there and uh, and so now we can't get the wheel off. So uh, kind of peeled this off. I think this is just kind of rolled around the backside and with some seam sealer in the inside of it. Um, so once we once we get all that figured out, should be able to kind of slide it up in there and put a little bit of seam sealer and, and seal that all up. But uh, yeah, so right now we're, we're mostly focused on trying to get this stuff, get the tension off of that, pull some of this stuff out a little bit more. Uh, but what I wanted to do real quick is actually mount a door on it, uh, the rear door with the good hinge, and actually kind of see how the, the body line and everything is over here and uh, see if it's happy or if it's mad. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that, pull this thing off, and then we'll probably pull the doors back off and start pulling on it a little bit more. All right guys, so a little bit of an update. Been messing with this thing for a little while, went home for dinner, came back and uh, started messing with it again. Uh, so this front door gets is on here and it's uh, it fits pretty well. The way the hinges work, I can just kind of slip them in there and it kind of has these like two little notches. Uh, so I don't actually have to bolt these things on, which makes it really nice to just kind of grab them, throw them on and kind of test fit some stuff. Uh, but I, as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap right here and that's because I don't actually have this thing closed. So as soon as I close it, there's still a little bit of a gap. Uh, obviously this, this pillar right here is just pushed in. And one of the things is if you look right here, you can see the top of the weather stripping is kind of at a 45 degree angle. Uh, whereas on the other side, it's pretty much like that where it kind of goes straight up, just barely angled at all. So uh, with it right here, that's about how the weather stripping should be. So as you can see, we probably need to pull that pillar out probably a quarter of an inch or something like that. And uh, the door gap right here is about where it needs to be, but it's super, super tight. Right here in the back, you can see where it's, uh, it was actually kind of rubbing it a little bit right there. So uh, got a little bit of this stuff cut off down there on the bottom actually maybe maybe I shouldn't pull it off because I don't actually I don't think I have the hinge on the bottom down there um, but yeah that's uh, that's kind of what uh, what we need to do so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and I'm gonna go home for the night but we're gonna come back tomorrow and I just I think I'm just gonna have to pull it I was being kind of you know gentle with it earlier but I think we just need to hook up and just pull it and uh, and also cut out some more of the jam so all right guys, so it is a new day back here. We're gonna get to work on the BMW here in a little bit, but I figured I'd give my uh, my good old daily driver that's probably gonna get replaced with the BMW some love. So this is my 2008 Saab 9.3 Sport Combi Wagon. Uh, it is a 2.8 liter V6 with a single turbo factory uh, six speed manual. Makes about 300 horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque on a Brew City Boost stage two tune. Uh, it has a cat delete. I have some four inch exhaust tips, a little diffuser thing back here. And um, one of the things that kind of made me get the BMW in the first place was because this thing actually got held on and totaled by the Colorado storms a couple months ago. So I've already replaced the hood. This was one we found at a, at a junkyard, just at like the you pull and pay. I think I paid like 60 bucks, which is super rare because these hoods are like 600 bucks and they're not even six or 800 bucks and you can't even get them in the country anymore. Uh, so I got that. Um, but that, and that was shortly after I got the BMW and then, but you could see on the roof, some really, really good size hell dents on it. And, um, so the whole roof is peppered. There's a really big one right here on the side. And I don't think I've ever really talked about it or shown that this car was actually damaged like that. But one of the things that I'm currently doing, uh, is swapping out the taillights on the right here. You can see that kind of the all clear version. This is the 08 and up. 
And then on the left, this is a, a red version, which this is the 0607 that came on the sport combi. So this was another thing that got damaged in that whole uh, hailstorm. So the tail light got busted right there. So uh, thanks to, uh, to esobparts.com, Matt over there, this guy. Super cool. Basically, it's, it's kind of the lifeline for anybody who owns a Saab in the United States and actually wants to keep it, uh, to keep it running. So uh, I got this front bumper from him, which is a Griffin front bumper. They're not, uh, they're not offered in the United States, uh, which is kind of a, a cool upgrade and not a lot of people have it. It was basically a 2011 up in other states or other countries. Um, a bunch of little parts and trinkets and wiring harnesses and bulbs and, and just a bunch of little things that, that have all kind of accumulated on this thing. He also has kind of a, uh, some parts cars and stuff like that that I've got parts off of. Uh, yeah, these sobs are super cool. Ty actually got one. He's had this thing how long? Three years? Two and a half fish. Yeah, yeah, two and a half, three years. Yeah. So he bought this thing shortly before I got this one. And then I actually gave my dad my old one, which was an 06 Aero Sport Combi. Uh, so this is my third wagon. And uh, this is like the best one that I've had so far. I'm just kind of holding out for a Turbo X. And if you guys didn't know, uh, Jamie's car is actually a Saab 9.3 Aero with a 2.8 2 Turbo V6 six-speed um, auto with all-wheel drive. So her car was actually wrecked in the front. Uh, that was the first car I actually b ever bought off of insurance auto auctions. Uh, but yeah, we replaced everything on the front of this. Uh, had like a base model bumper for a while and then we ended up... up oh, you want me to blow some bubbles? Uh -huh. I guess. Well, I'm gonna get finished working on uh, on that car and blow some bubbles for this little girl. Jim or Carson, what what car do you want me to work on next? Just blow bubbles to get me catch them. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Alright, so the tires are all rotated. Good to go. So yeah, I, I definitely like the the red a lot more. I don't know, to me it just it, it looks more like CTS V E and it matches the little red corner lights down there on the bottom. So the exhaust is a little bit crooked. It shouldn't have been crooked, but I, I deleted the mid cat uh, once upon a time and then it uh, it changed the way the back was because it was real nice. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the current daily. Uh, those of you guys who have been around on the channel for a while, you guys have seen probably too many Saab videos. Um, and I was hoping that this thing wouldn't turn into that. It's a little bit more work than I thought, but uh, I'm gonna go home eat dinner and now uh, we're gonna come back down here and start smashing out some more stuff on this. We're having another baby and we're gonna do a gender reveal burnout. <laughs> if you guys didn't know this or not but we were having an issue getting off this rear um, wheel basically the the wheel key we stuck it in there didn't have it in I guess all the way and then it kind of just rounded it off and these BMW wheel keys are super super specific um, basically tried a 21 millimeter socket a 22 millimeter socket hammered it on there tried these little bits I bought this thing off of Amazon this thing had a 22 and a 21 like those little uh, little grabber things and uh, I thought that was gonna be the answer but uh, it wasn't so uh, basically what I did is uh, stuck one of those old style wheel keys just next to it at an angle um, Basically as far over as I could get it just so I could weld a big old booger onto it And then basically just welded it and then it just kind of looked like an egg as it was coming out but We got it out. So now I got to pull off the, the inner fender well and uh, Try to get this quarter panel off. So I think kind of what's gonna happen is I'm probably gonna pull the glass Then I'm probably gonna go here and here I should probably actually call the glass guy and see if he could come over today. But uh, I'm gonna cut it like right in here. I'm gonna cut it right here and then I'm gonna pull this out um, and just basically try to get this thing as nice as we can. We might end up replacing this little inner structure, but, uh, but I haven't decided yet. I'm just gonna get uh, get started working on it because I, uh, I spent too many days stressing over this thing. I just need to get it done.
Dave, why are you making noises? Come on, I mean, I'm just giving the pulse. The pulse. The pulse to the, the shock. Yeah. yeah. So Dave brought his in induction heater over here. Yeah, get some work done. You get some work done. Is that what's happening, Trip? Yeah. He's he's working before 10 o'clock. I don't know, maybe. It might be 10 o'clock exactly, but... Yeah, we can pull this rear glass out and... Dave to save the day. Hopefully. I mean, Hopefully, we'll see. Dave's gonna give her the melt, I bet. You wanna take bets? I mean, he, has to, he has to paint <laughs> anyway, so. Give her the pause. Trevor, you think she's gonna give her the melt? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me get this corner melted. Alright. There she is. Man, I even messed the paint up. I'm getting pretty good at this. That's probably how they did that one over there. It's probably why the paint came that. off, huh? Well, that's in, it's a glue. Oh, it just rips the paint? No, it takes the glue off, which is awesome because when you want to paint a car... You don't have to, like, scrape it as much as that. Yeah, it got a little warm over here. Okay, so as you've seen, David came over with his magic little machine, and we got this thing all freaking yanked out. And the nice thing is, is the glue pretty much stays on the window. And uh, you can see, it doesn't really... I mean, sometimes it pulls up paint, but uh, didn't really mess anything up, which is uh, which is really nice. So uh, so yeah, I haven't decided quite yet if the whole quarter's coming off or if we're gonna do something right here. But uh, I do need to mess with this a little bit more and massage some of that. I was kind of kind of hammer and dollying it, kind of getting it back out a little bit more than it was earlier. And then, so when we had the door in on it uh, last time, this whole pillar was in. I would say probably about a half an inch so uh, you can see right now we got this little uh, little polar thing on there and uh, we pulled on it really really hard uh, basically to where this thing was pulling up in the air Ty was standing on it and then we, we pretty much just kept pulling it and uh, like kind of this thing started bending and what was it doing it was just like tweaking like you could feel it like twisting yeah and then the arm of the hydraulic was like pulling it was probably getting mad because I mean there's not really a whole lot of support it's pretty much like this kind of holding that so this isn't the greatest thing it's pretty good but this is a really really solid piece of uh, piece of metal right there I mean that that's a freaking big girl and the one right here on the outside was super thin uh, so I don't think that was really keeping a whole lot of strength in it so uh, I think what's gonna have to happen is this is a separate piece right here you can see right behind that there's that big seam and uh, so this piece will come off and I think if once I take this off, I don't want to go up here again because the roof is, I believe, aluminum or maybe not. I don't think it actually is, but uh, anyhow, it's riveted, it's glued, and this whole pillar right here is actually underneath the roof. So if I had to do it, I'd have to pull the whole roof off. Try not to mess it up. Just a whole lot of work, way more work than I initially anticipated. So I think what's going to happen is I'll basically do this like an onion. So I'll keep this right here. I'll go down like a couple inches, cut that right there and then replace this whole piece, section it in, weld it right there, and then this should be pretty much where it needs to be. And then we'll just test fit everything, uh, basically throw some like self-tapping screws in it, test fit everything, check the gaps, make sure everything's good, and then weld it. Um, that's pretty much it as far as, uh, as I guess what, uh, what we need to do. But yeah, I, I think for like a little, little pull, this would have worked just fine, especially for like pulling stuff out like this, like little things right there. Um, but overall, this is just, that's just a, a that's a chunk of metal. Well, yeah, I think we, like a, I mean, imagine if you got T-boned or I something. I mean, you it's want probably, that it's, there. It's, yeah, it's, you it's definitely designed, want that. It's probably designed for that side. It's probably like where they hit it, where they do like the side impact oh, yeah. crash testing is like right here. So like, that's, that's where you want. But like when we were pulling down here, it was, was oh yeah, I was like pulling. Bit, it was yeah. pulling all that stuff yeah. like really easy, and then especially like this stuff. I mean, obviously that's that's super easy. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I think that's gonna be it. I wish we would have got more done. I wish this whole uh, I've just been. This is one of them projects where I'm just procrastinating it and pushing it back and doing all that other stuff. But we have the whole side of a car to play with. But I really just I, I want to get this thing done. I want to get it out of here. I either want to start driving it or I want to sell it. Um, You, we're going to sell spree. We're going to sell everything. Sell everything? Everything. It's all gone. Everything's selling. So uh, I think we're going to go a little bit. If you guys seen the Audi video, me talking about selling this thing, I think we're going to kind of go back to basics and just kind of try to start over in a sense. But like instead of 
buying more crap um, or buying more projects and starting a new project. Uh, it, I'm always super excited and, and f like everybody, as soon as you get a new project, you're fresh, you wanna work on it. Your whole Google search history just completely changes and uh, you're excited to work on it. Whereas like cars and projects that have just been sitting around for a while, like even this thing, it sat around for like two or three months and like now I almost don't care about it. Like when I first got it, so stoked on it. Um, you know, I was like, oh, 40 miles a gallon, but I don't freaking need 40 miles a gallon. I don't live that far from the shop. So uh, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think about my, my whole little frame rack and should I keep this thing 40 miles a gallon and uh, or should I just keep the sob? Sob gets like 20 miles a gallon. It's a little hoop D. I park it everywhere. Don't really worry about it. Man, 50, 40 miles a gallon would be pretty cool. Or should I get something cool like a M3 or something? Or should I turn this into an M3 wagon? Too many ideas, too many other things. You guys know how it is. Trevi's custom shirt's coming out on Friday. See you guys later. Mm -hmm.